Okay, Maddie, we've got a phone call in episode number seven today. It's going to be an anonymous. Um, he wants to remain anonymous, so we'll call him Jack. Okay. Hey, Jack. Good morning. Hey, how are you, mate? Welcome to the Mentors Podcast, episode seven. And uh, and I know that you would like to remain anonymous, so we're going to call you Jack. Is that all right? That's fine. Thanks, okay, sir. Jack. We've also got Matt LaHood on the show today, so Matt, say hi. Hey, Jack. Welcome. <laughs> Maddie, how are you? Good, thanks. So, Jack, um, you know what it's all about. You've got to give us what the topic is, your question, and yeah. we try and give you the best answer that we can. So, shoot away, my friend. Sounds good. So, firstly, thanks for having me, guys. Um, just a quick question. I'm pretty new in the industry, uh, and just in terms of prospecting and cold calling, I just want to know what the best way to, to sort of find your personal flow is. So, obviously, steering away from sounding too scripted or copying someone else's dialogue. Um, and then on the back of that, when do you change it up to work out, you know, which does work the best? Do you change it weekly or daily or do you just pick quick, pick something and run with it? Yeah, great question. Okay, so Matty, do you want to give yeah. uh, Jack some uh, advice on that one? Jack, I'm going to give you something re- really revolutionary, okay? Yep. You ready for this? I'm ready. <laughs> Be yourself. <laughs> Okay, so um, good answer. Okay, so you went to school, you made friends, yeah. You made friends after school. You got a you got a social circle. Yeah. What do you like with them? Any scripts and dialogues, or you just as you are? Yeah. So yeah. So but, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So real estate is about being authentic, being straight, being real. Um, people will pick up scripts and dialogues, and look, I think that's something that's crept into the industry. You know, like in terms of. I've got to say to you, I'm, not, I'm just so not a scripted dialogue person. I've been selling real estate for 30 years. I just used to go in and see the owners, still do today, and just say to them, look, here's what we need to do. And, yeah. um, you know, they, they, they take you on, like people can feel if you're a wind-up doll or not. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. There's yeah. a lot of agents yeah, yeah. running around, like, you know, practicing scripts and dialogues. I'm not saying, you know, don't have some sort of framework. Yeah, some like sort of it, foundation. Yeah, some sort of foundation. Especially when you're new. You don't know what to sort of say. Exactly. So, Clouds is the expert at going through that with you. Um, but in terms of, like, when you get in front of somebody and you're trying to read a script, if you just talk from the heart, um, not from the head, mm. people are going to pick it up, Jack. Mm. And what, I, yeah. I, and, and what I'd, I'd also say, Jack, is li- literally just... You know, a script is you want to internalise it. So I, I work with a lot of new agents that come in, in the industry. They're green. They've never been in real estate before. Maybe just like you, but they want some sort of foundational roadmap of what to say. Maybe if it's a just sold call or I'm, an intro call, I'm just joining the industry. So you know, scripts and dials can give you that level of foundation just to build your confidence. Just to, at the beginning. In the yeah. beginning, absolutely. But yeah. what Matt said is absolutely correct. You want to be yourself. Um, yeah. A couple of things that I would say to you is, you know, I work with so many, so many agents um, that start in the beginning. And, you know, one of the things is, I'm going to say this to you is, just learn to embrace the journey, okay? Okay. Honor, yeah. the, honor the struggle because it will be a struggle. It's like this. I, I, I say to people like, Love the adversity and love the rejection, okay? Because okay. when you yeah. first start off, you're going to get a lot of rejection and because you're not so much used to that, you just don't know how to handle it or whatever else. So that's number one. Number two is okay. one of the biggest things I started to learn when I started real estate, and I know Matt LaHood did the same thing, was build your social currency. Meaning, like, if I, if I was in your position, I would try and put five new people into my database a day, five new people that I come in contact, give yep. them a card, tell them what you're doing, who you are, what your offer is, etc. And then if you yep. think about it, right, the biggest thing you want to try and do is build your database. At the end of the day, people by people. Okay, Jack? So if you had 25 people a week, that's going to be 100 in a month. You could have a database by the end of the year in 12 months, literally 1,200 people. Okay, because are you yeah. being new? Are you doing a lot of, um, say, door knocking or cold calling at the moment? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. A okay, lot. so so really, right now, you're going to have to ramp up your social currency to build build your your database because you know I've got some people who've been in the industry for like five or six years. And I don't know about you, Matt, but they're still door knocking. I'm thinking, have you thought about like building your social currency, building your database of people that you know? Okay. And I think that's yeah. the biggest thing as an agent because they're going to go to jack.com.au, who is you, right? And these people yeah. want to do business with you, right? So at the end of the day, if you can aim to build your social currency and try and aim for five new people every day, 
I can tell you now, within 12 months, you will no longer have to do the, the grind, you know, get your going, get yeah. your face punched every day, right? That but makes it, sense, yeah. Yeah, but it's, not a bad, but it's not a bad thing either because the more you start to love the adversity and love the rejection, I think that's what people don't prepare themselves for, you know, and then they go to hate and I hate cold calling or I hate door knocking. But sometimes you've got to start somewhere, but everyone's different. Um, I know Matt LaHood, yeah, did you, you didn't door knock, right? Because no. you, you had a large network. network. So so could we give maybe Jack some advice? You're, you're a very big networker. Yep. You built your business around networking. You never door knocked in your life or cold called, correct? No. No. So let's give Jack your version of when you started real estate and what you did. Perfect. So Jack, just uh, reverse up a bit too. So in terms of scripts and dialogue, this, the only scripts you would really need would be you know, Q&A when you go to a listing presentation, like what questions to ask the owners. Yeah. Um, now, yeah, you, can, yeah, yeah. you can have a, a scripts in front of you around what to ask them and then questions to ask the buyers. That's where your scripts need to help you. But then you naturalise those into your own dialogue. So, Claudia might give you a whole lot of scripts yeah, around okay. what to ask the – like a couple of questions you'd ask the, the owner, you know, like what to, what's prompting you to sell, you know, what time frame you're working on, have you ever sold a property before, tell us what happened, those type of questions, but you put them in your own language, okay? So, that's where you yeah. need scripts in real estate. Then when a buyer's coming okay. in, you know, like a buyer, you say to them, How, have you looked at anything else today that's excited you in the market? You know, what price would you pay for it today? What You know, how long you've been looking for? They're the, that's the scripts you need in real estate. Then you make them natural to your own dialogue, like you're talking yeah. to your best friend, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, that makes That's sense. That's the first thing. Yeah. Second thing, yeah, Clouds were saying before, like going down the path, I, I, I never use the word cold calls. I absolutely despise <laughs> it. It's always warm calls. I'm only making a call that I know that there's a connection, right? So let me talk to you about in your life, and I don't know you, but I'm assuming, you know, you've got a hairdresser, you've got, um, you know, somebody that repairs your car, I'm, I'm, you know, you, you know the local people at the car wash, you know, like yeah. um, you, your family have got, you know, extended um, business contacts potentially or, you know, whatever it may be. So yeah. there's the place to start, right? So they're, okay. they're, they're, yeah. not, they're not cold calls. They're warm calls. You're ringing up and you're saying, hey, it's Jack from XYZ Real Estate. Um, I just wanted to connect and say, look, I don't know if you know, you know, you know my mum, you know my dad, you know, obviously the hairdresser you go to, whatever that may be. Just, you've got to let them know you're in real estate because – Hairdresser was one of the biggest source of businesses for me. When you look on the video, yeah. I haven't got anything left now, so the visits are a lot, lot less than they were when it was growing. <laughs> but <laughs> when it was growing, my business was booming. Mate, you're going great. You're not losing <laughs> yeah. your hair. So jokes, jokes aside, but seriously, I went to the same hairdresser for like you know 25 years. And um, yeah. the gentleman I went to in Coogee would George? probably send me a John. Do you oh, remember John? John? Yeah, John. <laughs> John would send me at least probably a listing every two months. Because he'd wow. be sitting there doing someone's just hair. Talk and talk well, and talk. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, he'd be saying to his clients, "What are you doing?" They go, "Oh, we're going to be moving up to the coast." He'd be saying, "Oh, look, I've got one of my clients here. It comes in for years. Really good, trusted agent. I've been looking after him for years." They go, "Oh, give me, you know, organise." So it would be just that would be how it would work. So for you, look at your social circle, Claudia was saying before, but network. Yeah. Like what accountants are you dealing with in the area? What solicitors? Yeah. Um, do you know any bank managers? Do you know any? Go to the source where sellers are going to talk to before they decide to put their house on the market. Do you know what you're working yeah. with any valuers, any yeah, strata, okay. yeah. strata managers? That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. And, but, yeah. and, and, I would start there first and then after you've done that, if you can't get any results, then go warm calling and cold calling. Yeah. You know? And you know what yeah. I used to have, uh, Jack, is a thing called an automatic shot. The automatic shot were three, three things, three people in my inner circle that would always refer me business. So whenever I felt my business was lacking listings or I had listings but I didn't have buyers, my automatic shot with three people. So number one, there was a lady by the name of Mary. I won't mention her surname, but she lived in Darling Point, right? She used to go mm-hmm. to play bridge in Double Bay every Wednesday, I think it was. And she was a great client. I sold for her, sold for her daughter. Um, you know, her, her daughter was really high up in the bank. They, I used to get referrals from her daughter, etc. So I did a lot of business for, for her for a long time. Anyway, whenever I felt like I, you know, I, I needed some listings because I had buyers, I'd, I'd go to Mary. Hey, Mary, look, next time you're at the Bridge Club down in Double Bay, if you hear of anyone that may be looking um, or need some assistance with an agent, can you just think of me? And I would tell yeah. you, I would have either two ladies ring me or she would ring me and go, Claudia, did you get a call from Doris? And I'd go, uh, yeah, she did ring me. She goes, yeah, she's looking at selling her investment property in Bondi Beach or whatever it was. So that was my first automatic shot. The second one was White City Tennis Club, okay? I don't know, Jack, but my background was, after I left school, was playing professional tennis. And then I thought, well, how can I make this 
relevant for me and make an association or synergy with what I do. I love and I'm passionate about tennis. So I joined up White City Tennis Club, right? And in, yeah. the, and in those days, I used to go on a Wednesday afternoon, all the old guys used to come, the doctors, the lawyers, and yeah. there used to be a round robin, one till five o'clock, and guess what they said when we're having a beer at five o'clock? Claudio, what? how's the market? <laughs> you know? yeah, and I said, that depends. Are you looking at buying, selling or renting, right? So that was my yeah. second automatic shot. My third one, and he won't mind me mentioning his name, his name's Mark Mellick. And uh, he now owns a, a, a mortgage company in Maroubra called Ospac, uh, which he then he sold out to for, mm. I think, for quite a bit of money. And uh, he, I used to ring Mark and say, hey, Mark, if you're dealing with anybody around looking at buying or selling, think of me whenever I needed him. And I'd reach out to him. So I had these three sources uh, is what I called my automatic shot. So think of your yeah. business. Who could be the three people that you could have an automatic shot? So good market, bad market, these people will reach out to you. They're the, your raving fans because they know who you are, what you do, and what your offer is, and the type of person that yeah. you are. Okay? So yeah. that were the three bits that I did. So Wednesdays, White City, Mary at the Double, at the, uh, Double Bay Bridge Club, and then my good old friend, Mark Malik. okay? So yeah. think about that as well. That's brilliant, Clowns. Okay, and that's a good one. Yeah, I like that. Jack, one last. Have you got a pen with you? Yeah, uh, yep. I want you to write this down and keep it in front of you for the rest of your real estate career, right? It's, All right. Okay, you're right? Go ahead. Okay, yep. it's, it's not about who you know. It's about who they know, right? Mm. So the people yeah. that you know, it's about who they know. No. Mm. So you've yeah, got all that circle right. of yours, you've got to get in their heads and then get them sort of working for you. Because there's an yeah. American study that came out It said that um, everyone knows 285 people, right? Wow, that's true. So you think of it, how many people would you know? Think about it. And then the degree of separation. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And, and then yeah. so you're, you're arch- arching off the trust of the people that know you to trust them to refer you. Does that make sense? And they already trust you. And they already, tr- they, they already know, like, and trust you. So you've already sold yourself to them. So cold calling shouldn't need to happen, right? Mm. Now, w- when yeah. do you cold call? You should cold call when you have a red hot buyer who's looking to buy in a certain street. Yeah. They're the only cold calls you want to be making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you've got five, yeah. or, five or ten leftover and, and buyers from it, a sale that you yeah. had on the weekend. And they're not even cold calls. They're warm calls because you're ringing with a reason. A purpose. Yeah, with a reason. You, you've yeah. got a call to action. So if you never make a cold yeah. call again, you'll get up and skip to work every day making warm calls. Mm. As Cloud said, building a network with the people that are in the business that are networking, that already are in yeah. real estate. And that's the only leadership you need to think of every day. It's not about who you know, it's about who they know. So just remember, everyone you speak to knows 285 people. Oh my God, that's huge. Yeah, I love yeah. that. That's a good that's, yeah. that's a good. It's exactly. a good one, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. I just live by that Wonderful. theory all the time. I'll, I'll start speaking to somebody and then... It's a bit like, you know, you ask somebody, you know anyone who's thinking of selling? Um, and they go, oh, not really. No, we don't. It's a bit like when you ask someone, do you know anyone that's pregnant, right? Mm. If you do ask that, people first time, they'll say, not really. And you say, you're sure? And they'll go, oh, actually, I do. My sister's cousin, what, you know. It's a bit like, do you know anyone that's selling? People say, oh, no, not really. If you ask me, you're sure? There's got to be someone in your circle. And they go, actually, I think I do. All of a sudden, you know, these you've got people, leads that are there and they think about them. Exactly. And let me just yeah. leave you with one last thing, uh, Jack, yep. and thanks for joining us. Here's the one thing I would leave you with. Matt's given you one. I'll give you one. From a cold calling perspective, which Matt said it's not a cold call. If you're ringing with a purpose, it's an actual warm call. But, you know, always come from the place of help rather than sell. The four-letter words, help, four-letter word is sell. So maybe perhaps when you sell so- – if you've sold something or if you're working for someone that sold something and you're ringing around the street – just sort of say, look, just reaching out to some of the um, neighbours in the area. You may have seen uh, a recent sale just down the road. Um, look, uh, as, as, as part of that sale, we have a couple of buyers that are looking to, you know, who've earmarked your street and looking to buy in the street. Um, just wondering, yeah. would it be helpful if you were to get a market appraisal today to see where your, mar- where your home sits on the market today? Would yeah. it be helpful? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So use words like that can actually okay. have a level of influence a level of persuasion, yep. but also because you're coming from that place of help where most agents go, would you like a market appraisal? Like, say, would it be helpful? Even when you're doing your callbacks, you know, oh, yeah, we're thinking of selling our unit in Coogee, and you might say, well, would it be helpful if we came and did a market appraisal on your home so you know where it sits, whatever it may be, or a market assessment? Yeah. Sometimes little words can make a difference in, in, in getting the outcome that you want, Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Because you've been, you are, and you're being helpful. Absolutely, and something, That's, something they they can value rather than. Absolutely, yeah. would it be helpful? Hey, Jack, look, 
Matt and I have really appreciated your time on the phone this morning. Thank, thank you. Thanks, and, guys. Mate, and thank you for your question. Hope that helps. Go out that there. We'd love to maybe lot. catch up with you in maybe six months, Jack, and just tell us how your, uh, your career is going, okay? Sounds good. Lock it in. Okay. Sounds good. All Thanks, right, my guys. friend. Have a, all, all the best, Have a great Jack. day. You too. Thanks, Jack. Thanks Bye-bye. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. Maddie LaHood. <laughs> how many agents do we get that are brand new that come out, right? Like they just don't have sort of an – like getting an idea or a roadmap, you know? Don't you love the honesty of somebody that's brand new though yes. too? They just like yes. – they've just got that help me written all over exactly. the voice. Yeah, We're yeah, not yeah. looking at them, right? But they yeah. just got help me like sort Correct. of written. Correct. And it's good that there's a place like this, Clouds, and you're obviously you're yeah. coaching that they can tap and into. I just remember I forgot to bring <laughs> – I was meant to bring <laughs> – No, <laughs> not at all. about social media. <laughs> it's, it's now a trike. It's not <laughs> a bike, right? Like next to me. <laughs> We're not We're not a bike with two wheels. It's a trike with right. Clinton exactly. on the other side balancing it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> I was just going to – add though to, to the point that you guys are talking about right yeah, where us. you talk about uh, the network mm-hmm. the story that happened to me is I had a lovely lady that I was uh, pitching to one day right and she actually worked in an office over in Green Square um, and I went in I spent an hour with her I delivered as much value as I could and did everything I could to make sure that she trusted me mm-hmm. yeah. and then I walked away from that situation not thinking anything of it what had happened though is like I'd been putting a good product out, been working yeah. on it, working on it, working on it, and she became my number one advocate. She was the first one. Uh, she was connected. So to your point, yep. in terms of that connectedness, yep. right? Totally. She knows everybody in the industry, and, and, and that's what I was talking. That's that to me is like your automatic shot. Like you could go back to her, and like she would refer your business. Like just talking to her, just through. You know, remember you. Yes, you know. 100%. And you just look after your top sort of, you That's know, funny. top 20 or 30 referrers yep. and connect with them regularly. I used to connect with them, you know, every week. Mm-hmm. So they, they would remember, you know, like it's not – people don't know – you know, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Yep. I'd just drop past my top referrers, drop in and drop in, have a coffee with them at their workplace. Yeah. yeah. Just on my way out the front. Even if they were busy, I'd just drop them a coffee in. Anyway. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. All the time. I used to do it all the time. What a simple little thing to do. That's why I'm addicted to coffee. <laughs> I've had three this morning. You were This me? morning. We're, we're ready for breakfast. It's he, he gets two piccolos and I thought, oh, I, I don't mind a piccolo. And he goes, no, they're both mine. Your cappuccino's on its way. <laughs> <laughs> But, but here's the thing, right? So, like, when we like, let's go back to um, word of mouth, right? Yeah. And how important that referral system is. What's happening now with social media is you've got uh, access um, to create more content, yeah. to document what you're actually up yeah. to, yes. to connect with more people, and to yeah. amplify that word of mouth. Yeah. So, what's happened, right, is that one person that I was connected with, I can now take yeah, one job that point. she gives me. Document it, yep. put it out to social media on all the different channels, put my name on the end of a piece of content, and now 100 people versus 10 have yeah. access to that piece of content. And then you've already. And then it grows and it grows. You've got credibility on the back of her as well because exactly. she's connected to people. You exactly. Can, they can wow. say, oh, she uses Clinton. Yeah. yeah that's so, really yeah. cool. So, a, another real life example, yeah. right? So, doing this podcast, yes. um, which has been like a fantastic experience to watch how people are responding to it, um, because Sprinkler Media is linked to it, people have seen that. I've now got more credibility. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right? Then, you know, I might do work with Patrick Cosgrove, yep. right? So he came on the show episode number two. We've yep. done some work together. Um, and I'm documenting that process, the stuff that we're going through. And I'm putting out yeah. weekly mashups with him in it. And I'm putting out That's right. um, his content with Sprinkler Media on the end of it, right? And the same thing happens. So somebody else says that. And, and like, hey, Sprinkler all, is growing rapidly, obviously. And then what will right. happen, it will reverse... Give us credibility. We're talking, and then through yep, you. It. Yep, and it's all positive. It's all value, value, value. Being in the same room with Claudia. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, no. I don't know. My credibility oh, sword. Oh, thank you, Maddie. Like. <laughs> yeah. But it works, right? You put positive. Like, I mean, yeah. I walked into this show not expecting a thing from it, yeah. and just wanting to do something to help. Yeah. And that's exactly how you should approach any piece of content yeah. that well, you put that's out. Exactly what Claudia's well, idea well, was that's when he what set we it said. up. We said yeah. let's let's yeah. try and help as many agents yep. as possible. Yep. Let's try and keep it real because what. Probably someone is going through right now. They're probably going, I'm new, what would I do? Like, for example, that call we just did with Jack. You know, what could be some things that I do? And if there's two or three takeaways, I mean... As you know, and I know, Maddie, like we're we're dinosaurs, but yeah, you know, yeah. we didn't have this opportunity. <laughs> no, where we could, like now you can get a did. podcast, you can yeah. go on YouTube or whatever it may be, and today you can get this sort of information imagine instantaneous. Like you know? just getting the feedback clouds too. We should share with all the listeners what you've been getting around the authenticity of. Yes, the, they like that it's not actually scripted and exactly. it's real. Exactly, we're just answering as they come in. We, we don't know the question, so we don't really know just, the answer. Just put us on the spot. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's not like we're we've got three weeks to sort of think about of an answer or, 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 or we get. <laughs> together and bounce off the answer no, exactly like we get put on the spot and then you know and and i think the, the beautiful thing Rough now with, with with clinton here 
the value that he's going to give a lot of these guys as well because mm. that social media needle, as you know, Matt, that's yep. that's where it's all going, right? Oh, like, 100%. You know, yeah. to me, social media is like Channel 7's LinkedIn, Channel 9, his yep. Facebook, Channel yep. 10 is Instagram. It's 100%. So, so here's a good story for you, right? I was down <laughs> yeah. in Piermont and um, one of the news anchors for Channel 10, he walks up and down the strip um, every day. Yeah, right? yeah. And I go down there, I drop off um, footage to the editor, um, yeah, yeah. To, to Tom, and... Um, and he walks past. Like, you know the guy that's got like the reddish kind of hair? And he's always on Channel oh, 10. Hugh Remington. Oh, yes, Hugh Remington. Hugh Remington, yeah, Remington yeah, he's right? A great so, reporter. Yeah. yeah, so like I stop him in the street and I'm like, mate, can I get a photo with you? And he's like, yeah, sure, that's fine. And he looks at my shirt and he goes, oh, what do you do? And I'm go, you know, like I'm a social media guy making video content. Yeah. And he literally looks at me and he goes, mate, that's where all the money is, mate. That's where it's going. <laughs> <laughs> you, like, literally, what you're doing is the future. Really? Because it's, it's happening, right? Like news 100%. used to be the big thing. That's yeah, where yeah. distribution took place. That's where all the attention was. But now everybody's on their mobile phone. Yep. Great. Everybody, right? Well, Matt's got a bigger checkbook than me so he can buy you out. <laughs> <laughs> <It's a laughs> the thing is, we'll talk Clinton, later. you know... The, f- the hilarious thing, and I think about this, you talk about it's all going, everyone's got a phone. Like, say, my, my son's 19, right? Mm-hmm. Can you believe he's never read and he's never picked up a newspaper? Yeah. 100%. So, you know, and my daughter's 17, wouldn't wouldn't even know. Yeah. She wouldn't actually know the name. If I said Sydney Morning Herald, she'd go, what? Yeah. If I said Daily Telegraph, they'd go, what? Right, yeah. But they know more about it. They tell me, did you see there was an accident here yeah, or yeah, did you yeah. see something? I mean, how my do you know? The they go, thing. I've got the live page, news yeah. feed on my phone. Thingo on the phone, so yeah. like, there's no stuffs happening before I do. I, I'm old school. I like to go and read a newspaper <laughs> and have a coffee. <laughs> and they go, Dad, what are you doing? Like, if you go in a cafe today and have a look around, ninety yeah. percent of people, or if they're sitting by themselves, or and even if they're sitting as couples, <laughs> they're either on the phone, phone yeah. or they're on their laptop. Correct. It's unbelievable. So if you're not in that space in front of people, you're not getting your services picked up. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Got something great from this episode? It would mean the world to us if you passed it on. Tune in each week as we mentor a new agent. Have a question? Want to be on the show? Get in touch with Claudio Encina, Matt LaHood, or visit our Facebook page. The Mentors is brought to you by Sprinkler.media.